endangering public safety by playing hardball in the Brexit negotiations. And would put all our citizens at greater risk. Meeting the medics as the FBI director faces calls to resign over the Florida shooting. 13 Russians charged with interfering in the 2016 US election as President Trump claims it proves there was no collusion with his campaign. Tremors felt in Mexico City as a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit southern Mexico. The UKIP leader fights for his survival and tells Sky News he's been victimised by the press. This has been going on for six weeks. There's probably nothing, been nothing like that since the Profumo affair or Diane and Dodie fired. And in sport, a second bronze for Great Britain at the Winter Olympics as Izzy Atkin claims the country's first ever skiing medal. Very good morning to you. The Prime Minister has warned that the EU risks endangering public safety by following what she calls deep-seated ideology in the Brexit negotiations. In a speech at the Munich Security Conference, Theresa May proposed a new treaty between the UK and EU to work together on intelligence sharing after Brexit. But, she says, it requires political will on both sides. And within Europe, we are working ever more closely with our European partners bringing the influence and impact that comes from our full range of global relationships. And we want to continue this cooperation as we leave the European Union. So as we leave the EU and forge a new path for ourselves in the world, the UK is just as committed to Europe's security in the future as we have been in the past. Europe's security is our security. Guys, Alistair Bunkle is in Munich for us now. And Alistair, uh, there was a real theme of the UK and the EU working very closely together on security. Yeah, I mean, her point was is that security is too important for there to be any divide between the EU and the UK. Affect security, the things should be looked at completely separately. And I think uh, Darren Schitt will be pleased with that. Hi. Yep. Hi. OK, thank you. The head of the FBI is facing calls for his resignation after it emerged that the agency failed to act on a warning about Florida gunman Nicholas Cruz six weeks before Wednesday's school attack that killed 17 people. Overnight, Donald Trump visited victims in a Florida hospital and later met members of the emergency services who were first on the scene. From Florida, our US correspondent Cordelia Lynch sent this report. The people of Parkland have pleaded with their president to look at America's gun laws. Do our gun laws need to be changed, Mr. President? Simply not enough. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News, Parkland, Florida. 13 Russian citizens have been charged by US prosecutors with plotting to influence the 2016 presidential election. It's the most dramatic development yet in special prosecutor Robert Mueller's investigation, which is also looking at whether any members of Donald Trump's campaign team colluded in the plot. While writing on Twitter after the announcement, Mr Trump noted that the Russian interference started in 2014, before his high-profile entry into politics. Our US correspondent Greg Milam has this report. Donald Trump has spent months calling the Russia investigation a hoax and a witch hunt. Well, let's return now to the mass shooting in Florida. By carrying out one of the worst shootings in modern American history, Nicholas Cruz joins a long list and a notorious one at that. Of the 95 mass shootings carried out in the US between 1982 and 2017, 92 of the killers were male. Although there is often speculation about the mental health of those who carry out these acts, there has been less conversation around whether gender is part of the issue. Our senior correspondent Ian Woods has this report. These are the faces behind the dozen most deadly mass shootings in America over the past 20 years. B.I. Ian Woods, Sky News. Now, Great Britain have won their second medal in the Winter Olympics. Overnight, Izzy Atkin won bronze in the women's ski slope style event in Pyeongchang. The 19-year-old success could be the start of a Super Saturday for Team GB, with medals up for grabs in speed skating and the skeleton. Well, at least uh, Christy is due to take part in the first heat in the speed skating in a short while. Sky's Mike McCarthy is at the National Ice Hockey Centre, joined by some of her teammates and supporters. And Mike, I imagine at the atmosphere building where you are. Lost sound.
Uh, well, I do apologise. We seem to have uh, lost Mike there. We will go back to him, though, of course, from that ice skating centre as and when we can. Now, you'd be forgiven for not being able to recognise it, but the pangolin is one of the world's most illegally trafficked mammals. In fact, only 8% of Brits can identify a photo of it. With one taken from the wild every five minutes, primarily to feed Asian food demands, the pangolin is in danger of becoming extinct. Well, joining me now is the Wildlife Policy Manager for the WWF, Dr Coleman O'Creardon, who's in Nairobi. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us here on Sky News. I was reading something like 288 pangolins are poached every day uh, in comparison to 55 African elephants. Why is so little known about the plight of the pangolin? Well, the elephant is really such an iconic species. It's understandable that it has grabbed the band down the years. But in many ways, when you actually get to the countries where pangolins are found, they're, they're much more, they cover a much greater range and they're very embedded in um, local culture. In all of the countries where they're found, they're eaten locally. And most of the trade to Asia is for the scales which are used in Asian medicine. Uh, so they, they do actually, they're much more widely recognised by people living in those countries than they are by people in the UK. Uh, you mentioned that they're using Asian medicine. Why else are they trafficked? So the, the main reasons why they're poached in the first place is food and medicine. In Africa and in Southeast Asia and East Asia, there is a, a tradition of using them for food, for the meat, which is kind of considered like a high-end meat meat product that you would get in a high-end restaurant or you would serve to very select friends. But then, as I say, there's also a long tradition of using them for a variety of ailments in Chinese medicine. And that's really, it's the scales that are used in medicine, so that's really where the trafficking is going on. How serious is the situation for the animal? Are they facing extinction? <laughs> They, it's certainly looking that way. Compared to some species like elephants and rhinos, we don't know as much about just how many of them there are in the wild because they're very shy. Uh, they're mostly nocturnal. But just looking at the way the trade has shifted from Asia to Africa and you know, the, most of the Asian species are now critically endangered and the African species are going that way, there is certainly demand is far outstripping available supply. So what can individuals do to try and help the plight of these animals? Well, from the point of view of individuals in the UK, there's, the UK is hosting a conference on illegal wildlife trade in October, and it, pangolins will certainly be one of the animals that will be widely discussed because it's a problem that's common to Asia and Africa. And we would encourage anybody in the UK to basically talk to their political representatives and urge their political representatives to make the most of this opportunity and make sure it's not a, a talking shop. Um, of course, as well, any organisations that are working in the countries where these animals are found, from India right through Vietnam and Indonesia and so on, and all across sub-Saharan Africa, if you're giving money to, uh, uh, to wildlife charities working in these countries, that that can help as well. Um, but we really want, basically, the, the first thing to do is tell your friends about them so that maybe the next time we do one of these photo photography surveys, 80% um, of people will recognise them instead of just 8%. And presumably, when people traffic or poach these animals, it has a knock-on effect for other ecosystems and, indeed, other animals. Yeah, because normally with uh, pangolins, the way they catch them is using snares. And of course, these snares can catch anything of that size. You know, they can catch um, uh, cat species. They can catch, uh, say, for instance, uh, in countries like Democratic Republic of Congo, where there's the you have the endemic ape species and the okapi and so on. They can be caught in snares, too. It's a very indiscriminate and destructive way of, of catching animals. Uh, so, yes, there is a knock-on effect. And, of course, these people are bribing customs officials and so on to look the other way. So these customs officials, once they're, they're susceptible to bribes, they'll also look the other way when it's narcotics trafficking or human trafficking. So there's a corrupting effect. OK, uh, Dr Coleman O'Creard, and thanks ever so much for your expertise and your time. Thank you. Have a good day. You're watching Sky News still to come. All the sport ahead of a big day of FA Cup action. Plus, a further development from West Brom's controversial training trip to Spain involving their head coach. 
Welcome back. Let's get a check on all the day's sport now. Good morning. As we've just heard a few minutes ago, Great Britain have won their second medal of the Winter Olympics this moment. Very well done to him. Now we'll be live to Pyeongchang in Saturday sport on what could be a big day for Team GB at the Winter Olympics. And we'll look ahead to the rest of this weekend's sport with the Daily Mirror's chief football writer, John Cross. That's at 11.30. And there's more live now on Sky Sports News. OK, thanks ever so much. Let's get a check on the weather now, shall we? From cool, brisk northern fjords to the warm, tranquil waters of Southeast Asia. It'll be fine for many, but there's a dying rain band across central Britain, showers in the northwest and more rain in the Atlantic for tomorrow. It'll be fairly mild. Most places will be dry and sunny going into the afternoon, but there will be a scattering of showers in the west, mainly over western Scotland. So they'll bring some snow to northern hills, mostly rain elsewhere. Yorkshire and the Midlands can expect a fair amount of cloud as well, but the cloud will break up fairly quickly and any rain will soon die out. The Weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. You're watching Sky News coming up. How are Ireland's start-up stealing with the mighty power of the tech giants in the capital? We'll find out in Swipe. This is Sky News. The top stories this hour. Theresa May has insisted Europe's security is Britain's security at an annual global security conference in Munich. Donald and Melania Trump have visited the survivors and those who saved them following Wednesday's school attack that killed 17 people in Florida. And it's Super Saturday for British Winter Olympic hopefuls. Great Britain won their second medal overnight and have several chances for more throughout the day. Well, Elise Christie is taking part in the first heat in the speed skating. And Sky's Mike McCarthy is at the National Ice Hockey Centre, joined by some of her teammates and supporters. And I imagine the atmosphere building where you are, Mike. Indeed it is. We're in the bar at the National Ice Arena here in Nottingham. Well, there you are, some of the... Uh, young hopefuls here at the Nottingham Ice Arena. So uh, next stage for Elise is the semi-final, then the final later this morning. Uh, we'll be back to uh, see how she gets on and what the reaction is here in Nottingham. Mike, thank you. Great to see some stars of the future there among you. Uh, you are watching Sky News coming up. How are Ireland startups dealing with the mighty power of the tech giants in their capital? We'll find out. That's coming up in Swipe. Eight, or text GOSH to 84902. Welcome back. Now it's time for our technology programme Swipe. Here's Gemma. Welcome to Swipe. Here's what we've got for you on this week's show. This week's show. Don't forget to join us again for more Swipe next week. And in the meantime, why not follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. See you soon. Bye bye. The head of the FBI is facing calls for his resignation after it emerged that the agency failed to act on a warning about Florida gunman Nicholas Cruz six weeks before Wednesday's school attack that killed 17 people. Well, overnight, Donald Trump visited victims in a Florida hospital and later met members of the emergency services who were first on the scene. We're from Florida. Our US correspondent Cordelia Lynch sent this report. The people of Parkland have pleaded with their president to look at America's gun laws. Parkland, Florida. Now the future of the embattled UKIP leader will be decided by party members in Birmingham today. Henry Bolton is facing a no-confidence vote after his former partner sent racist messages about Prince Harry's fiancée, Meghan Markle. But he's told Sky News that the messages were doctored and he believes the media have treated him unfairly. It's a private matter and actually it needs to be dealt with private. I understand the scrutiny, I understand the public interest, but this has been going on for six weeks. There's probably nothing, been nothing like that since the Profumo affair or Diane and Dodie Fayette. And so we, we are, this is, this is, we've taken this to a ridiculous degree. 
And, of course, we'll have full coverage of that make-or-break leadership vote here on Sky News uh, from 3 o'clock, so do stay with us for that. Let's take a look at the weather now, shall we? Beneath pink skies by the Taj Mahal or as the sun sets in the City of Angels. It'll be fine for many, but there is a dying rain band across central Britain, showers in the northwest and more rain in the Atlantic for tomorrow. It will be fairly mild. Most places will be dry and sunny going into the afternoon, but there will be a scattering of showers in the west, mainly over western Scotland. They'll bring some snow to northern hills, mostly rain elsewhere, and Yorkshire and the Midlands can expect a fair amount of cloud as well, but the cloud will break up fairly quickly and any rain will soon die out. Britain will be mostly dry overnight, although showers will linger over northern and northwest Scotland for a time. Ireland and Northern Ireland, meanwhile, will turn wet from the west with the rain edging into the far west of Wales and Cornwall later on. It'll be mild in the rain, chilly in the east with a patchy frost and fog. Rain over Ireland and Northern Ireland will edge across Britain on Sunday, but southeast England and northeast Scotland will be dry for much of the day and it will be mild. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. You're watching Sky News coming up. Theresa May is in Munich to reassure European leaders of Britain's security commitments post-Brexit. More coming up on that after this short break. You could